in the ear of his sorrow, I have co held you the Alpha. I guess I own co and you, as a Henry Lorak are in Kyol Naduke. Chaniel Kish Jan, a huv, feeb and an olap, a she, she tarin more a helmer son and do each galer. Mila feeb at the Hokel, a farachin, a china map on a location. I was in Bullock G. Helm, a tokel farachin, Jeffrey. The reaction to what a lot of us did when we started to play in folk groups was horror. And we were definitely swimming against the tide. There were people breaking the mould back then to try something quite different, something that their parents' generation would never have dreamed of trying. I also made instruments to be able to have a whole chaos of the farpersen, so have people to. What she now could use, what she just had last year, no routine machine yachin, get the va she never can you get a hon. I guess why some hin could you get out car? Ah, have people to. I guess Bjarkin Juni or Piperach or Achrich Gemor had a share in a blenichin. Hani Alm Sorichje, Nurva Korim Alm, Rutten Ure Eachin Lesha Feep, I guess Shaw and Skilach Shin. Piperach, Alms Nicole and Dukasach. The Highland Pipes are nominally in B-flat. As pitch has risen uh, over the years, it's, it's been quite a challenge for people to get the, their pipes to sit at concert pitch so that other instruments can play along with them. Other instruments, a, a lot of them are tunable, but if you're looking at something like an accordion or a concertina, which is a fixed pitch instrument, then getting the, the, getting the pitch of the pipes right was, was quite a major issue. The technical issues were, were mainly ones of volume, and it's loud. <laughs> It was is the, the simple fact of the matter. So it's loud for the audience, so getting the other instruments up to a level where the audience could hear them was, was quite a big issue. That's not so difficult if you've got a drummer or a bass player or an electric guitarist, but we're talking here about fiddles, tin whistles, acoustic guitars, classics. These are quiet instruments. So the technical challenges are getting the sufficient volume and sufficient clarity for people to be able to hear themselves above pipes was quite a major issue. Fi bulen china serien kerskelar as jo i ne programmen kærlig tårsøg i det hele visen var færd nyal frisalets kynsin og det var tors det stik kalde nye serien og det var isen der sånt gemor kan bi fi bakken jo brain kalde en kjul kuchok men her træn jo så padi maloni og det ne chieftains og det kuchok padi kinen lesen body band. Spasinch in the nails, we get the televisions, Haroshian, Kolochrishishin Akinya. The folk revival in the 60s and the 50s led to the establishment of hundreds of folk clubs, which didn't exist in the 40s, in the post war period. All of these folk clubs were established in the 50s and the 60s and into the 70s too. And so, effectively, what that did was it gave folk groups a platform or a place, an audience to play for. Whereas that audience hadn't really existed, you know, uh, certainly before that. I think the other thing is the, the climate of the 1970s as well. You know, the UK was going through rapid deindustrialization and a shift in the economy. There was a lot of unemployment. There was a lot of discontent in the 1970s. You could say that the, the kind of the professionalization, the commercialization of folk music kind of benefited from that because there were people that were willing, young people were willing to try something quite different, something that their parents' generation would never have dreamed of trying. Songs of Scotland, BBC Scotland, I guess what Corm machine like look cool. I was showing it on Gaelic people and 
Vierna program in Shin, I guess Ron Shin Faven Boer son, Prasnuk and Hostagunia, we click on the call and cool. Smushin Hanik call and cool, Le Prasnuk of one of EBC, there's some program in the Yenag, Vamihin, I guess Aiki Carmichael, uh, Alistair Frischel, I guess Alistair Donloch, I guess Filler Ella Charlock Cowie, I guess we met you click and the program in the Norsen, maar Sheher Behe. But how it was like Colin Kuehl, famous speakers, microphones, and so on. I guess it was a cost of the Shin Akanaum. And the program in the Shin Akan BBC, STV, was a lot of Ryan Kuehl, and it was a technical sound, and it was a engineer, and it was a lot of fun. I guess Ryan Shin Fatten Apasse, I guess how like in Merkigag at Yanag. One really important musical issue, stylistic issue, was the fact that Pipers and the other instrumentalists actually treated the tunes differently, they played the tunes differently. A lot of the fiddle and accordion guys, particularly dance band players who were, had been playing pipe tunes for, for Scottish country dances and Kelly dances for a long, long time play the tunes an awful lot faster than, than pipers would be used to playing them. I experienced this myself. You would think you knew a tune perfectly well, and someone in a, in a folky session or in a band situation would call that tune, and you'd think, oh great, I'm going, to, I'm going to be able to play along with this one, and then find that actually you couldn't, because it was really fast, much less pointed than you were used to doing, and quite often we found ourselves having to get rid of some of the ornamentation, again, just to, to take care of the speed issue. So there was a lot of work to be done uh, on the part of the Piper to, to dovetail into the style that these guys were playing the tunes. Fim mira in the program in Chayamach er BBC, der er shin for the hashish for fach ketunu a fee bedashach she run a shin chachlonya to fee pach leere hich kach shach kan yer er is like a program piper ach ker radio. After who got shint got television, I guess a clickle instrument in Ille, so the shint from the Hoshik, a Hulishian. By Colin, we should kind of get all of her. I guess here at Aram Suchin Colleru, by Shin for Sean O'Rook, by the JSD band. For Mike Ward, for Clickers, Tannehill Weavers, who were keen. I guess for Tony Cuff, a pair of Click like Ocean. So, who should call on their toys for the Click gigs to shoot the show? A hacker, I can now mention, got all I can see in the finals, I can see in the medicine, so no lie. I guess, who me shahat, if you call it Shahal and Shins, who are at Piper and Ille. For uh, Alan McLeod. Can you see that in the heat, Colin Kuehl cast profession to answer a fee for Kachloik? The first band I remember who had a piper who was a, who was a full member of the band, an actual working member of the band, was a, a band called Alba. The piper was Alan McLeod. Alan was a real trailblazer because the, the, way, the only way you could really become a full member of the band as a piper would be if you did something else as well because they didn't want pipes in every set, especially bands that featured singing. So Alan could play the whistle, he was a real good whistle player and he had learned the baran from his father, he was, he was a very good baran player and he also, to, as I remember, played some mandolin and, and bazooki as well. So he was the first guy who was encouraged to be a multi-instrumental piper, who wanted to be and was encouraged to be a multi-instrumental piper, and that was actually crucial. That was a really important stage in the development of the whole thing because it pointed the way forward for other bands, such as Battlefield Band, Aussie and the Tannehills, all these guys. It became clear that the way to do it was to track down a piper who was a good piper, but who could do other stuff as well. I think the technology side of things uh, was a big and significant factor in the professionalisation of folk music in the 70s. Um, to my un my knowledge is, to my understanding, what happened really was that the PA systems in the 60s were huge and mega. 
you know, uh, big speakers that, that were absolutely gigantic. And then the technology improved to the point that you could get these uh, amplification and speakers and stands I mean, inside a transit van. And at that point, it became more feasible for people to launch a career on the road. Duncan McGillivray joined the Battlefield Band in 1979 and they made an album called Stand Easy. I remember seeing them at the Edinburgh Folk Festival that year, which I think was the very first Edinburgh Folk Festival and just being blown away by this colossal sound that this band was able to make in, in the Usher Hall, a big room with a big PA system, pipes at the front, just really... That was a, a, a turning point for me personally, that was a, the, the, the thing that made me think I quite fancy a go at that. I'm just wondering if I can announce you that people in Oka Fashkin have a fibre of Lundin and the Sea of Hinella and the attitude of the pipe bands. I guess for Shin Tarin or Gaid, who in the people in the establishment pipers, but do and they root to be a Vamitianig, I guess, who may more go Hanig or son of the Klish Connery, call on his Klish Gluas, Klish Kle instrument in Ellis. Hunde machine trichkes trichkes editorials as ne piping times as ele ka machani karami jenu gv serifib. There's always a risk when you alter your, your style of playing, especially in such a conservative world as, as the world of piping, that people will not like it. Uh, the, the old guard, so to speak, had done a lot of hard work in, in preserving a certain style of piping, of which they were very uh, justifiably proud. So a lot of these guys weren't particularly happy when uh, pipers came along and, and it was mainly younger pipers who were coming along and, and as they perceived changing the tunes or, or, or playing them wrong was, was one phrase that was used to me. We had to be respectful of that, we had to be because in a lot of cases these were the guys who had taught us. And so the way we showed that respect was, was by interfering as little as we possibly could with the very nature of the tunes themselves. So I always tried very hard to keep all the, all the same ornamentation and no matter how fast the tunes were going, sometimes it was a losing battle, but I tried to do it. What I used, what I used, was to use the written machine, was to get the machine to the machine. I guess, why some him can you get out of the car, I guess, I guess, what I do think that Scottish musicians, for some reason, have been very willing to experiment with different sounds, different instruments, um, and different types of repertoire as well. I think if you look at the, you know, did that scene attract pipers from, you know, other other performance contexts? Of course it did. I mean, at the time, uh, it was radically different, you know, to consider that you could play, even the idea that you could play the pipes with another instrument uh, was really something that really hadn't been done, apart from, of course, in some of the military band traditions before that. There definitely was a view amongst some of the old guard that, uh, that we who were doing this new way of playing these tunes we're doing it because we didn't have the capability to play in the, in the traditional style. If they had thought for five minutes about that, they would have realised it was a mistake. One thing that we did do, which I think was quite successful actually, was that uh, Robin Morton of Temple Records, who, who later became the Battlefield Band's manager, invited six of us to make an album of our own solo playing. Playing traditional repertoire, marches to space and reels, hornpipes and jigs, slow airs, six, eight marches and a pibro, in order to prove that we, we did, in fact, have the skills that these guys were trying to decry that we hadn't. So six of us were involved in that album. Duncan McGillivray was involved, Ian MacDonald, Glenwig, Jimmy Anderson, Rob Wallace and Ian MacDonald of the Nielsen and District Pipe Band, uh, who had mentored me for quite a long time and, and, and I played on it as well. So. Uh, we made this record called A Controversy of Pipers. Uh, we made a good album and, and it did sell a few copies but that wasn't the main aim. The main aim was to, to say to people, look, here are these guys, six guys, all playing in folk groups, all good pipers. When I was in my life, I was in my life and I was in my life 
and I had a set Marguerite and I would have heat up and tea. I guess when we go up and them people to some look to this, I guess that and then you I could all and Archie then and touch a stay clad and one Tannehill Weaver's battlefield band. I guess I don't mean what was such jail at people than Nanunar. Um, I run my case the calling people. So it's in the noon, short said, written by my case this. I run my L of his shin was in dry. No doubt practice Latin. I know the Utlik calling thing is a bee, be a general, be a click on a calling people. Ha, so come out, earn enough. So no doubt my case this a clan and a shop. Vammy Swing, I can now go out, come out, and a kind of exciting. I suppose the kind of um, the precursors to people like me, you know, the, the people that really kind of forged it ahead. I mean, when I think about this, I always think about Glasgow first because, um, it, you know, a lot of that work was happening in Glasgow in the 70s. Glasgow is Scotland's biggest city and it's also traditionally been a very important city for live music. I think the piping tradition is strong in Glasgow, both because of the migration from the Highlands down in the early, late 19th and early 20th century, and right through the 20th century as well, actually. So a lot of Highland pipers were moving to Glasgow and settling down here and having families uh, and playing here and teaching and things like that. So I think it was kind of natural in a sense that where there were pipers, there was a lot of pipers, some of them would be willing to experiment and try out new sounds. There's a lot of bands and a lot of players that were, I think, really important, you know. Uh, people like Jimmy Anderson, Ian McDonald, Duncan McGilvery, you know, uh, Rab Wallace, and of course Doogie Pincock in the Battlefield Band. I joined the Battlefield Band in 1983. I've been taken over from Duncan McGillivray, who was the, the first piper in the band. One of the biggest breakthroughs we had was quite uh, early on in my career in the band. We got a little TV series, a, a short series of three half-hour programmes, which the BBC filmed live at the Pavilion in Glasgow. Folk music on the telly wasn't that big at the time, and, and so the very fact that we, were, we got this opportunity was, uh, was pretty important. But the other thing that was really significant about that programme was that we had guests uh, on, each of the, on each of the shows, separate guests. And the guests were pretty surprising, actually. One of them was Van Morrison. Van was a colossus of music for many, many decades, and at that time it was an enormous coup for us to be able to get guys like that uh, onto the, onto the programme. And at that point we knew this is a real thing now, we don't, have to, we don't have to fight anymore. People were changing the Highland pipes so that they were adaptable to play with other instruments. But of course at the same time, people were really um, altering and reinventing a previously um, dead tradition, that of the bellows blown pipes. Nure <laughs> Toshek an aviohach jen a feed week an alaba she shina tachert ik a toshach jen ochkeden va work jen a dunya va chien jen a feed week va yed a kluch na pi be more merha gus marshin va gma furista vi a gaherach uh van a feed vor jen a feed week va klechach an un doi lish de horgan by Kluich and then Doi. I guess Marshin by Gutrik, a Kluich and then Schorse pushed. Ruta had the reality of a few weeks, a few vor, how a clerk of Bellows, no Balak and Shady, an Archer with Shady, and Savaga Hain. I guess Marshin had the Revitian Kumal Cherim. Uh, agus ha sin gma femal ha ha vi a fib fas fluch uh, nur ha kluch. Uh, 
ach rut ille ha et rielichtje ha fibwe karen savoch rutuv fibor. Ha ik ben nu in Polvoor en 96. Wat mij is aan het zijn, de downsik en de stretchmachine is, er zit de smoe ha ha dim ze kunt doen met fibwe ja border pipes. Ik is Hoe ik zit in Polvoor ik een maand moe dat om ze is building got that she is going to tell us to click on the sessions. Um, as we had G's and two, I can click that in the Hunia. So it's going to either send my vows on Shinny and a big actor to the field of click. The Dunia no ya, uh, it can build of gen gen shul gen movement, uh, yan a few week. Uh, for example, it was a very good time for the Kutramach. It was a very good time for the Kutramach. It was a very good time for the Kutramach. And it was a very good time for the Kutramach. And it was a very good time for the Kutramach. It was a very good time for the people in Marshin. It's because the Khro Karaman Roshin of the Akluchsen Glesen Eder Yelichtje. We wish to Akluch the people more by Jirich Akluchsen Un Glees. Fat Nahunya, Shin B flat, Glees the people more. Nurahanik a few week. The Karaman own of the Akluch Connery. Feeler in a gus clucheter in a fox, a gus stu machine, a gus fashion ur a canaum. Snochgeten a gus shaketen, a nurva dunya toshach a clechach peeben, some buyen, mer the battlefield band, Alaba, Ossian, the Tannehill weavers. Uren hero dunya buloch. Tolletjum München, Guharaj, Hoof, the Pibe Mora. Ach, Nurahau, Klerkach, the Pibe Becker. And I suppose there are Dunia Erarsen Goch Tolletje, Leshin, she earns much Eder Yelichter of them. I guess her all tradition. Kengel Trish and an undoy had tradition Kengel Trish a few more. Geharic who have undoy ha dunya a clechach no pibe more on some tarim. Nure ha clechach no pibe beke she instrument eder yelich to have and gus va dunya dierich tolich of the a geist joch rish. As a bad you have more of a lot, you don't have had to touch in your goal like how how many people have people in mind a whole like first person the whole story and the whole and cute, but die because had to marry people in the whole story not just to be a count to be. I think it would be dull when a home and die because then car is shocked and jerk. Can we swing in? Yeah, shocked and jerk. I was like, I'm going to call him John and Ruth and Pia, you know, to the channel, Nimea. I guess there's a public and Mark Kim and the Niua. I had to get him to first. I had to get him to be in, he can have a job plan on, right, we're going full time. As I was wondering, I was going to get the shad. I was going to get fast the shad, I was going to get fast the slack to the V, my colon. So it's going to either say, having to give a full making straight at the feet, but it's a feel. It's in a clear and full making, I must just mention. It's in a short of call us shallums, a full of shallums, and we get a big click quality feel. I'm just going to give a lot of Linux day and beyond and that on the feet. A lot of you had, I think it's loads of the follow for calling folk. And a doy had 
the Vada people in Tlaikan and Colin, the instrument in Achahan in Gri, Colin, Fokahunta, Hahulashin Amplified Q, electric guitars, drum, bass, rhythm machine, I guess in English is Minigri folk music, how could people that Navi and I guess how could the Hulashin Ella Timical it? And because it's quite limited musically in terms of its note range, there is a tremendous amount of creativity has to go into to putting pipes into musical situations. And when you look at what's happening now with bands like uh, the, the Treacherous Orchestra and the Peat Bog Fairies and, and all these guys who've really stretched uh, things right out and have got the pipes doing, sitting comfortably in, you know, electronic dance music genres and and almost, in some cases, some jazzy situations. You look at what Martin Bennett and Fraser Fifield have done. The, the, the amount of work that's being done now in, in terms of the creativity driving things forward, the piper is definitely at the heart of it. I was a piper in the hotel, a father in the China Mark from the location, a Gemma Jeffries from the Jack Clay, who took a nice feature, because he was a sort of machine. I was a bullock J. Helm, a total father in Jeffries. There were a few bands around that, uh, that existed before they had pipers in them. And it's interesting to speculate why, despite the fact that they had perfectly successful careers that were doing absolutely fine, that they took this jump of, of bringing a piper in. Because it was never going to be easy. <laughs> as, as we've talked about, it was always going to be a challenge. I spoke to Brian McNeil, who was a fiddle player in the Battlefield Band, uh, at some length about this. And his view on the matter was that really, it was the, the pipes was just the missing ingredient. They liked the tunes. Uh, they, were all, they were already doing quite a lot with pipe tunes, and as, as many other musicians were. But they knew that there was something missing, and that, that, that there was some kind of feel or vibe missing that wasn't making these tunes just sound quite the way they should. And of course it was pipes. Being a piper in a folk group was, was the thing that made me glad I practised when I was a wee boy. Piping's probably more popular than it's ever been uh, and playing with other instruments as a piper is more accessible and popular than it's ever been. I'm going to be able to do a lot of career in the past few years. I'm going to be able to do a lot of work in the past few years. I had to go to my mother and I had to go to the hall and I said, Ed, Ed Kjell will launch you. I was going to the people and I said, Darsen, I was going to go to the hall. I had to go to the hall and I had to go to the hall. I had to go to the hall and I had to go to the hall and I had to go to the hall. I had to go to the hall and I had to go to the hall. That time paved the way, it pointed the direction, a direction that's been followed very successfully by many pipers since. <laughs>